So they're in the process of training people both at the Election Commission as well as the NAACP office. How many of you know we've got an office in the city of Peoria? Raise your hand. All right, good. The word is getting out. We're at 101 North MacArthur Highway. We have a great office there. And uh, we want to invite you anytime you want to stop by, stop by. But hopefully you'll stop by to be trained as a registrar. Two places that you can be trained immediately. And I'd like to see at least 10 volunteers tell Jackie, tell Helen, who's here as well, that, and Al may not be here, he's got to have some eye surgery. He's playing racquetball and got hit in his eye. So is Al here? Where's he at? Where you at, Al? Stand up. There he is. Oh, yeah, there he is in the front row. Yeah. Trying to be young, got hit in the it's time for It's time for the transition, Al. <laughs> But at any rate, they, they want at least 10 volunteers if you're retired and then 10 volunteers from the young people uh, to register people. There's two spots that we've selected. Uh, January 24th at 2.30 in the afternoon for the retired folk. And that'll be at the Election Commission. So I'd like to see before you leave here today, 10 retired volunteers who will be at, that, at the Election Committee. And it doesn't have to be limited to 10, but we want at least 10 who will be at the Election Commission uh, at, uh, on January 24th at 2.30. The Election Commission, you know, is the old police station uh, down on Adams Street. And then on Tuesday, January 31st at 6 p.m., for all others, young people as well as retired people, uh, they will be doing training at the NAACP office at 101 North MacArthur Highway. So, folks, this is important business. 7,000 people. And that's going to be a monumental task, but we've got three dedicated, dedicated people and all their volunteers who intend to make it happen. But they can't make it happen without your help. So please volunteer to do it. We'll take a list of people, especially the retirees, before we leave here today so that we can notify them that we'll have at least 10 people there on January 24th. Thank you very much. You know, it's, it's fitting, but I'm not surprised that Dr. Ali would um, decide to title, entitle today's program as Passing the Torch. If you would give me a little freedom, uh, a little license for a moment, I wanted to share a couple of things. Uh, Dr. Ali has uh, served as my mentor for longer than she actually realizes. I used to work with Dr. Ali at ICC, but about 20 years ago, Dr. Ali tapped me on the shoulder much in the same way that she has tapped Ms. Ashanti on the shoulder and asked if I would participate in an event held at Carver Center. Uh, Reverend Jesse Jackson was coming to Peoria and Dr. Ali asked me if I would be willing to serve as an MC for that ceremony. And there was nothing special about me. There was nothing, I was not blazing the trails in school. I wasn't um, the kid that was involved in everything at that point in time. She just saw a young woman who she decided, I'm gonna put you out front. If you were at New Morning Star last night, um, if you weren't there, you missed the treat. Reverend Harold Dawson Jr. was phenomenal. And one of the things that he spoke about was being called and then God will qualify you. And to me, the reason why that's so important because we oftentimes see young people in our community and if they aren't making the best grades, maybe they not, may not be making some of the best decisions, sometimes we'll, we'll turn our nose down at them. That's the last thing that we should be doing. We should be elevating our young people so that one day they will feel within them what we already know is inside of them. And they will live up to what they were called to do. They will live up to their legacy, I promise you. Because my mother was very frustrated with me at 18, I can, I'll tell you that. Without a doubt, she was very frustrated with me. But I think I, I turned it around. I turned it around. And, and the reason why it's so important that we do pass the torch to young people. Um, that's something that I don't think that we have a problem with in Peoria, are the elders in our community that 
uh, created a pathway so that I could serve as state representative because I didn't get here on my own. Uh, the folks in, this, in the crowd today like Ms. Helen King, Jean and Jackie Petty, Dr. Ali, uh, Don and Ernestine Jackson, Mr. and Mrs. LaCollis and Sharon Reed, Johnny Stinson, Catherine John Timms, Andre Bohannon, Grant and Jean St. Julian. Those folks blocked and tackled when it was time for me to run up the field. They blocked and tackled when it was time for Ryan Lowry to run up the field. They blocked and tackled when it was time for Corey Thomas to run up the field. They blocked and tackled when it was time for Tamara Butler to run up the field. And it would on the only thing that we owe is to block and tackle when Mrs. Shanti decides to run up the field. It's now our turn. It's work, though. And that's, that's, a, that's a reality that we have to accept. And all of us have our own lives. We all are encumbered with any number of things, but it is our responsibility to, at the very least, do what the elders of this community have done for us to create a pathway so that we can have the opportunity. So I just wanted to share that with you because I'm so excited to see so many young people in here today. And I promise you, I will not be labor any longer after this. If you are between the ages of 14 and 40, if you're here today, would you please stand? That's, that is awesome. And let me share with you why that's so incredible. I don't know about you all, but I go to a lot of functions and a lot of events. And oftentimes when we attend these functions and events, it's everyone is always at the same events. And typically everyone is 50 and over. And that's a blessing. That's a blessing, but we need more young people to do exactly what's being, to done, being done today, and that's showing up. And that's showing up. Dr. Ali, as many of the other names that I have um, illustrated and some that I did not speak on today, have created opportunities for us so that we can now stand at podiums, and give other people opportunities. There are a number of people today that are going to be recognized for blocking, for tackling, for not just being folks that the general public would, be, would consider successful, but the people today that are going to be honored are much more than successful. They're significant. And that's so important because you can get caught up in yourself. And you can decide that you are going to be successful and that you're going to make it. And Joe and Jean and LaToya have to do it on their own. That's not what today's award winners have done. They have decided to be more than successful, but to be significant. And that's significant in the lives of other people. And I don't know about you, but I don't know what it would be like to live in a community full of successful people that didn't care about being significant. I'm blessed because I live in a community full of people that care and they show it through their work. So before we go into the uh, awardees, I want to thank all of you for all the work that you've done so tirelessly in this community. Our first drum major award, the honoree's young son was murdered in September of 2006. The man who murdered him was sentenced to 71 years in prison. But that did not give her a sense of closure nor comfort. She found that the only way to get through her child's death was to help other families get through the death of their loved ones. Her grief over her son's violent death has turned now into a movement. A movement to remember the senseless, violent, tragic death of children and adults across this community. She has given all of us a way to break through the statistics. 
For the second year in a row, she has brought more than 200 people together for the National Day of Remembrance. It is a day in September to remember each victim of a homicide, a suicide, or an accident. On this day, when we celebrate the legacy of a man who died in violence, we honor this drum major who works to make sure that we remember every victim of violence. Our drum major award in the category of community empowerment goes to Mrs. Yolanda Wallace. I don't know if any of you all have attended um, the National Day of Remembrance. Typically, it's held at the, um, it's held downtown and at the riverfront. And I can tell you, I, I participated last year, and it was phenomenal. It was absolutely phenomenal. When you see the way that a person's heart and their desire and their dream and putting work behind that, what that can accomplish, you saw people from every walk of life from politicians to guys that probably left the street corner to come to that day of remembrance. And just imagine if we decided to take this mentorship concept into reality and grabbing one of those young men and doing what Pastor Dawson said last night, taking them by the hand and walking them through what it means to truly be responsible men and young women. So thank you so much, Ms. Wallace, for the work that you're doing for families in this community. Thank you. Our next honoree was an, an outstanding basketball player in high school, college, and in Europe. She then came home and after stints as the assistant coach of girls basketball at several out-of-state colleges, uh, she then decided to serve as the coach at Manuel. Her old high school, she then returned home, and she decided to go to her old neighborhood and jumpstart Proctor Community Center. What's happening at Proctor can happen at Carver. We all know how important that is to this community, and we need to stay diligent about ensuring that we keep as much support going to Carver as we can. She started a girls basketball league at Proctor to go with the boys basketball league, but she uses that league as a tool, a tool to reach young people, to teach them about more than just sports. She teaches our young people about values. She teaches them uh, about self-esteem, about collaboration, about working with other people. Those are skills that they will then be able to utilize in the work world. Speaking about the collaboration that it took, she brought a broad group of organizations from a wide variety across the community to then put together programs for the greater community that Proctor serves, like blood drives, GED classes, um, the vegetable mobile, a kind of traveling farmer's market. She has made education as visible as recreation at Proctor. And for that, the director of Proctor Recreation Center is a drum major for reviving our roots. Willing to challenge and inspire young minds, our drum major in the category of community renewal goes to Mrs. Janelle McLeod. And accepting uh, the award on Mrs. McLeod's behalf is her husband, Daniel McLeod. I'd also like to add that Mrs. McLeod is also the daughter of Mr. James K. Polk. Our next recipient is a leader who works primarily behind the scenes, building and supporting the success of others. An unsung hero and role model she has been partially responsible for the academic and ultimate career success of many professionals within the Central Illinois area. 
She's a longtime educator, and she has no idea because I see her and she has a blank look on her face. She is a longtime educator and advisor who has mentored those who have become physicians, nurses, social workers, engineers, teachers, attorneys, and those in numerous other professions. As academic skills specialist for the University of Illinois College of Medicine at Peoria, she has helped dozens of minority medical students and residents to improve their academic and communication skills, excuse me, communication skills to better their position by passing their boards. Students describe her as a wise counselor and a mentor who they rely on for support and for guidance. She advises a variety of diverse student interest groups, and she orchestrates the annual Minorities in Medicine Celebration, which honors Peoria area minority physicians. A servant leader, she is passionate about her work in helping minorities to succeed and often goes beyond the call of duty. It is time for her to be recognized, she knows now. It's time for her to be recognized for the leadership that she provides this community and our drum major award in the area of minority adv advocacy goes to Ms. Lorraine King. She is so deserving. We always knew that we had soul, but this honoree helps make sure that we have soul and gospel on the riverfront every summer. Twelve years ago, under his inspiration and leadership, the Peoria Park District added Soul Fest to its list of annual ethnic festivals on the Peoria Riverfront. This two-day event showcases African-American musical heritage from gospel to jazz to old school R&B. It has featured renowned artists including Vicki Winans, The Mighty Clouds of Joy, Boys to Men, Black Street, and The Fabulous Dramatics. This local leader could have been content representing his district on the south side and that would have been worthy enough. Instead, he took it to the next level and helped to create an affordable, family cultural event that attracts thousands of people from all over central Illinois. This person received a drum major award several years ago for his work as the Peoria Park District trustee, but his role in establishing one of the city's premier summer festivals deserves a second drum because it is a major feat. Because he continues to give the drummer some, Our drum major in the category of cultural development goes to the Peoria Park District Vice President, Mr. Robert Johnson. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> I love when I look out in the crowd and I know who's getting the award, but they don't know they're getting the award. <laughs> Members of this group have one thing in common. They're all retired from Caterpillar Incorporated. Make that two things. They're all concerned about this community. Why else would retirees choose to work with young people for free? In late 2008, more than 2,000 CAD employees throughout the country, salaried and management, decided to take the company's early retirement package. A few dozen of them decided Peoria's young people could benefit from the skills they've learned in life at Caterpillar. Since then, they've opened the group to retirees from any company, and they're passing it on, handing it down, lifting even after they've finished climbing the corporate ladder. They are probably the best known for their work at Manual Academy, but they also are involved in voter registration. Those 7,000 people, that's what they're working on. At Manual, they volunteer for everything from hallway monitors to mentors. They've used the business skills that they learned at Caterpillar to help the school run more efficiently. 
But more than that, they put their time where their heart is. To the members of the concerned African American retirees, or as they're affectionately called, CAR, they are drum majors who set the standard for young people to follow. Our drum major in the category of educational support goes to the concerned African American retirees. Would any and all members of CAR who are present today please come forward to be recognized? And last, but certainly, certainly not least, we present the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Commemorative Service Leadership Award. This award goes to an individual who has made a significant recent contribution, having great impact to our community. Even before Jackie Robinson integrated basketball, sports played an important role in the long fight for civil rights and equality in this country. This year's winner of the Dr. Martin Luther King Commemorative Service Leadership Award continues that legacy in his own personal style. He is a member of the Board of Directors of the National Civil Rights Museum in Memphis, Tennessee, which is located on the site of the Lorraine Motel where Dr. King was assassinated in 1968. Here in his hometown, he is known for countless hours that he has devoted to organizing J.G. Anderson's annual summer basketball camp. His efforts have given young people a chance to meet, mingle, and learn life skills from NBA stars. In the process, he's raised many thousands of dollars for worthy causes such as St. Jude, uh, PC CEO's uh, Senior Meals Program to the Richard Pryor Memorial to Carver Community Center. So it runs the gamut. There are only 32 African-American team vice presidents in the NBA, and he's one of them. To the Memphis Grizzlies, he is vice president of the basketball operations and team programs. To Peoria, he is a philanthropist, a dream maker, and a true community servant. Our recipient for the Dr. Martin Luther King Commemorative Service Leadership Award is going to who we all know as Double D, Mr. Dana Davis. Now, Dana, Dana is not able to be here with us today in person due to uh, the Memphis Grizzlies had a basketball game just this afternoon but he's asked one of his closest friends, Mr. Graylin McLeod, to accept the award on his behalf. Um, first of all, Dana couldn't make it today. He sent me, um, and so I'm just gonna read what he wrote down verbatim. This came to me at least 20 times. He emailed me, that wasn't right, and he would email me again, so I hope I get it right because Lord knows we struggled with it. Okay, and um, he, um, I would, <clears throat> I'll just start now. I would really love to be here today, but duty calls. We have a game with the Bulls. And by the way, Memphis did win, and I lost $10. <laughs> As I accept the 28th annual Martin Luther King Jr. Commemorative Service Award, I am very proud to be able to follow in the footsteps of some friends and community leaders who were also recipients. Rita Ali, the very first. McFarland Bragg, Don Jackson, Ken Hinton, Carl Cannon, Dr. John Strand, and Percy Baker, just to name a few. A very important goal in my life 
was to make my parents proud, my peers proud, my city proud, and myself proud. <clears throat> I wanted also to be able to give back. My father taught me the importance of giving back at an early age, and I plan to continue to give till I'm not physically able to anymore. One of my proudest endeavors has been the <clears throat> basketball skills camp that Mitchell Anderson and myself started many years ago. In the past nine years, we have given almost $200,000 back to the community. The camp has afforded funds to subsidize underfunded inner city programs and many scholarships to deserving young people. I would truly like to thank from the bottom of my, of my heart five positive peers that really helped me shape my life. Bobby Humbles, Wayne McLean, Mitchell Anderson, McFarland Bragg, and Graylin McLeod. In closing, as being a lifelong Peorian who has been very blessed to experience many different cities and countries, it is always great to come home. Peoria is home and will always be home. Once again, thank you for this prestigious award. Double D. And that does conclude, uh, conclude our award ceremony. One thing that my mother used to say to me uh, as, a, as a young woman growing up, she would oftentimes say, you cannot soar with the eagles when you're strutting around on the ground with turkeys. <laughs> and luckily for us, in this community, we have a lot of eagles that we can soar with. So young people, please remember today, because it is your turn next to soar.